Hey guys, <clears throat> Kev here, and I have a dissimile to do for you. This is the new Pena X Series Bravo. I believe it's a uh, Knife Joy exclusive, unless it's just the certain scales that are exclusive, but I'm not sure. Somebody last night on the live stream was saying that Blade HQ had a carbon fiber one, but that could have been a custom, so I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it. Anyway, Pena Bravo is uh, actually. So far, maybe my favorite Pena. Um, I really like the the Apache Kickstop, but that didn't have deployments like this. So I think this is my favorite. To me, it kind of reminds me of a Pena Axon. Uh, it's really cool. I love the black micarta. You can see it's already taken my oils well, which usually micarta does not. Um, if you look at my Sharpshooter Jacks, it's similar micarta. I think it's the USA micarta. I even have a black micarta one. Might be the same stuff. I think it is. Um, but this hasn't really taken the oils, but maybe that's because I don't sit and flip and fidget with it. I just kind of hold, hold it, open it, close it, use it, put it away. Um, so maybe that's the difference there. When you're fidgeting, you get a little more uh, wear in on the knife, I guess. I don't know. Just making shit up. But um, I want to take it apart and put skiffs in because uh, the action is good. It kept loosening, so I need to do something anyway. But uh, I was feeling there's some pivot lash unless you have it really tight like this. So I just want to see. Plus, I want to see what it looks like inside because to me it looks like a sub frame lock. Um, it's got this cool copper backspacer. And I just thought maybe some of you guys out there would want to see the inside of this. Um, so this is kind of a first impressions disassembly. I haven't done these in a while. I just haven't had knives to take apart a lot. Um, one thing I don't love is this sort of space right here between the lock bar and the scale if you go a little too high on the lock bar you'll pinch your skin in there and it'll want to take some off especially left-handed um, if i'm doing this it pinches me but if i go down here where they want you to it's fine um, it works very well left-handed it's another reason i wanted to pick this up because it has a liner lock uh, the detent on this one is very good you have a front flipper and studs you can reverse flick it thumb flick it it's got some cool acoustics I'm uh, really digging it. It's a dropper if you let it. Um, it will crush your nail. So just kind of do the sideways thing if you don't want to have that happen. I do have some skiffs ready. These are just different 5 millimeter sets I've had. Uh, one of these came out of a stout prototype right here. Uh, I just took this apart and put it back together. I, I could not get it centered. I don't know what the deal was. I think I got it now. It's very close. Uh, it might be slightly off to this side, but the tip is definitely centered. Um, I ended up having to put taco bearings in here and put one washer in. The taco bearings are different. They use these little thin washers on top of the normal washers. So I only used one thin washer and that kind of straightened it out. I don't know what was going on. This one went around a lot. It was centered when I had it, but, um, you know, use and whatever. Um, I don't know, maybe something happened there, but that's why we do prototypes and that's all feedback I can give to QSP. Um, so let's get into this. We have a T8. You're going to have T8 on the pivot. Luckily on this model, he went with a captive pivot. So you don't have tooling on that side. It's not a spinning. I guess it could still be spinning. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I guess we have, do we have to take the clip off? It looks like we might have to. Yeah. Maybe just the top screw. We'll find out. Nope. Both. Let's see if it starts coming apart. Mm -mm. No. Oh, there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to put these back in here. Oops. See, that's why, because I don't want to mix them up. I don't know if they're the same length. I could check, but let's see. Yeah, I think they're the same. But anyway, we can leave this scale over here. Um, here's your pivot collar made out of copper, I believe. Is copper magnetic? I would think not. Yeah, it's not. Um, all right, so we'll leave that here like that. And then we have, oh, this is dope. Look at this. See, this is why he takes it apart, just to see. Look at that sort of bronze finish on the scale. Um, you have these really cool, so they have two screws holding in the lock bar insert. Probably because it's so thin, they want to make sure it's stabilized. Um, and then you have a pin here and two screws to disassemble. It looks like we're going to need a T6 for that. 
uh, grab this. So my bit drivers today, you're going to have the Brian Brown Vulcan driver in zirconium. And then you're going to have the Journey Tool Co. driver. This is the Taurus River's Edge Cutlery Exclusive in aluminum, actually. Um, pretty pricey. And then I also have this guy from Get Good Screw. That's awesome. This is the Little Beach. And I have one other one that I just don't have here because I couldn't keep them all in the same container. All right, sorry. So, yeah, I have another driver that's... Um, I just can't keep them all in one place because I have... At this point, I have four sort of bougie ones, so to speak, titanium ones or whatever. Uh, you see that pin? I don't know if it's sliding out already or what. If it was, I don't remember it sticking up like that when we first looked at it, but I could be wrong. So this should just come apart. And I, I just want to see the inside because, yeah, you see the pin there? That's just kind of pressed in, which is good. It's a good fit. Um, there you go. You even have a steel washer on the inside. I mean, they, they really did a good job here. Uh, reminder to me, the bearings are facing out. Oh, no. Look at that. Let's just take a screenshot of this guy. I always screw this up. They're both facing the same way. Um, there we go. So that way, if I have to go back to stock, I'll know how they had it. Usually, it can mess with centering if you put them in differently. It doesn't always, but... Here's our skiffs. I'm going to go ahead and just try to take the ones I've used before. You can tell by the coloring on them. See how these are a little darker? Those have been used. I um, believe another set was used as well, but these should be fine. I'm just going to make sure I can feel them rolling in my fingers. They are rolling. Mm, they are rolling. So no need to use a new set. Might as well leave those for something else. I have like 10 sets right now because I've stocked up. Um, I was just sick of order. Every time I did a disassembly, I would order another set because I had replaced the one I had, right? Um, just seemed prudent to, you know, do it this way. So let's take a look at the pivot and see if it's captured. That hurt my ears, guys. It was like fingernails on chalk. There's no captive pivot. So this is actually, this is actually a free spinning pivot with tooling on one side. That is a terrible idea. I don't know if they if there's something I'm missing here, but it looks like that is the case. So, oops, sorry. So that kind of sucks. Because what can happen is, you know, you get it spinning or the one side, you know, this side starts loosening and then you're kind of screwed. It's just, I don't know, it's just never a good idea. But people tend to do it. I know Pena really likes these spinning pivots, which is fine. I actually think spinning pivots are pretty good. A lot of people complain about them, but they tend to, um, spinning pivots tend to stay in place better, I think, not walk as much. So I get why companies like it, um, but I would never do it free spinning and tooling on, you know, one side. That just seems dangerous. So I'm going to take a microfiber and just check the detent hole. Make sure it's all cleaned out. Usually, Riot does a pass-through. Yep, you can see it's a pass-through. I went in the wrong side. <laughs> Did not mean to go in that far either, but look at that. Right through the kisser. That was a bee's blades joke there. Look at that. I'm definitely picking up stuff, though. So then I'm going to blow some air through there just because I may have left some material in there. All right, and then we can clean off the other stuff here. I'm gonna flip these washers over because they've been starting to wear a track in with the, um, starting to wear a track in, oops, with the stock bearing. So I wanna give them fresh track here. Um, just some stuff I picked up from you guys along the way. Shout out to you guys. See, it's very, very light, but you can tell it's on that side there. I put oil under there so it stays in place. I'm going to clean off this stop pin. Um, a lot of times you'll get a knife from factory and it's basically dirty. I mean, it just is how it is. Um, you know, they can't do what I'm doing right now to every knife and take the time, you know. It's just a lot of work and time. And I know it sucks sometimes, but you can see a number there. 
164. We can take a look at the other side. 164. So there you go. It's not necessarily numbered, but uh, there's your backspacer, that copper backspacer. Really cool. I, I like the look of that. I dig. Um, one thing you want to be careful of with a knife like this is, I don't know if I can get this out, but you want to make sure if you have these barrels in here, so that means there's another set of T6 screws on this side. You want to make sure those are tight too. So sometimes you got to take this scale off and tighten that down just to make sure because if your centering's off or something, you'll know because something will be off. Um, but hopefully we don't have that issue. So I believe, whoops, I believe this guy goes through here. So your show side is going to have the non-tooled pivot. There you go. Yeah, no uh, no captive, no nothing. Interesting. Oh, shit, I need to flip that one, too. This one I don't need to put oil under. And you can see these are nice, thick washers. Um, sometimes you'll see washers be super thin. I prefer them like this. They put a little cutout into the scale, so they still sit flush, but they're nice and thick. Um, all right, so we don't need the magnet anymore. Take a look at the insert here. See, there it is. You have these two screws, which is a nice way of seating it. Um, they're actually T8. So I guess everything externally they wanted to have. No, it's not external. I don't know. I'm just checking tightness. And you can see it sticks over here pretty far. So they, they got the lock bar strength up. Now, of course, on a liner lock, it might need to go a little further to get that detent up. So let's get our bearings going here. Now, we'll see how well, you know, skiffs fit in here. But usually, in a Riot knife, they fit really well. It's almost like they're meant to fit skiff bearings um, and not the stock ones that suck ass. So, I'm going to get a little bit of KPL Heavy. I'm just going to put a tiny drop. getting harder and harder to put a tiny drop because it's not coming out and then a big splotch comes out there we go all right i'm gonna put the blade on here actually i'm gonna take the stop pin it's easier to assemble it like this obviously there we go put our bearing in like that Hopefully we don't have to do this five times, but we'll see what happens. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to take this pivot and clean it off. You can see there's Loctite on it. That's from me, actually. Um, oh, and I meant to put the knife shield on the blade. Shit. Oop, T8. I could probably just do it after. Just put it on the outside of the blades. It's not a big deal. It's M390, but... I'm kind of testing the knife shield, so there we go. There's still a little bit on there. You could probably chunk that off with something. I wouldn't really recommend doing this, <laughs> but... Looks like it wants to come out, that's all. All right, I got most of it. Take my Loctite. Spread it around. And then we're ready to go. There we go. All right, we have our little T6s. 
sorry, it's hard for me to see and do this. Uh, probably hard for you to see too, I apologize. It's being a little bit weird right here, so I'm just trying to be safe. And oh, there we go. Tighten them down. Tighten them down, and that one pin does stick out a little bit, which is interesting. Everything's lined up. I'm going to start the pivot in. Is it going to fall off? Maybe not. Tighten that down a little bit. I'm going to shut the knife. I'm going to put the clip in. All right, so they did fall out. Oh, look at that. It just sits on top. That sucks. I mean, it's just kind of a weird way to do it, but I guess with the liner lock, they kind of had to do it that way. I don't know. I just turn until I start to feel resistance and then I kind of just let my fingers slide so it doesn't cause any issues. Okay, centering is dead nuts. We can check the play and everything. A little bit of play. See how the action is. Absolutely just don't love this lock bar. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, it's not tight at all. Jesus. Okay, hang on. Or is it supposed to stick out like that? There we go. Something snapped into place. Okay. Centering looks good. Play. No play. Whoa. Holy shit. It's not quite dropping, but... Interesting, right? Now, these bearings have to wear a track into that new um, washer. So, you got to keep, you know, that in mind. Um, it seems fine. Let me just back off a little bit and see. Centering still looks good. I think I want to tighten it a little. No play. I think that's good. I think I'm going to let it break in at that point. Nice and centered. Um, does anything feel weird? It looks like stop pins in properly. The backspacer is seated properly. No gapping or anything. So what I was talking about earlier should be fine. The pivot looks good it does seem a little wide in there but i think that's normal lock up fantastic again you can see the bearings but i think it was like that before this gap looks the same somehow the access to the lock bar seems less but i think that's just me having oil or something i think yeah man it just wants to suck in once it gets to here it's like zip Got a little bit of a rattle going on when it closes like that. Seems different than it was. I don't know if maybe that's how I seated these. Just see, I loosen the clip and see how it sounds now. A little different. I'm actually going to put Loctite on these clip screws because I just think it needs it. Seems a little bit. Seems a little loosey to me. I don't know. Not loving that. Okay. The tooling's not great either. Unless it's supposed to be a T9, which I think hit some of his knives are T9. It's not T10. I don't know. It's the same with the Jack Wolf knives. Um, they say it's a T8 for the scale screws. But a T7 works way better. It just fits down into the into the bit better or into the tooling better. Where the T8 is kind of shallow. It's weird. It's hard to explain, but 
I know he uses similar screw idea to uh, Pena, so could be the same concept here. Just a little bit. Should put it down at the end instead of the... It's kind of dumb of me to put the t Loctite in the middle of the screw. I just realized that, but... Clip's good. That's a little better. I don't know, it's probably just a mental thing for me. Centering. Looks good to me. So, we shall let air... It feels very smooth because you got the skips in there now. There's no side to side, is there? No, it's just the blade moving up and down, right? I think... Definitely no up and down, side to side when open. Closes like that. And I think it's going to break in and be basically drop shut. But we'll see. As those washers wear in, that's probably that little bit of movement I'm feeling. So, anyway, that is the Pena X-Series Bravo Disassembly Reassembly Skiff Bearing Swap. You guys know the deal. I'm a maniac. Um, so, absolutely love you guys. I don't know why that's on the screen. Absolutely love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Let me know what you think of this one. Did you get one? Are you going to get one? Oh, we should do the uh, knife shield. So this is from Knife Pivot Lube, just like the uh, lube here. A lot of this stuff, the microfiber Q-tips, it's all from uh, Knife Pivot Lube. They are great people over there. So just spray a little bit on like this. Um, but you can go over to knifepivotlube.com, use my code LEFTY10 at checkout, and get 10% off your order. I like to put some, so I kind of rub it in to the blade. Obviously, be careful around the edge, but I like to put it on the spine, get it down the tip, roll back to the jimping, do this. I try not to like close it all the way. I just try to close it a little bit so I can get it in places I can't when it's open, vice versa. There you go. It basically adds a layer to the steel, like a film. Cleans it off real nice. Looks beautiful after you do it. And it's supposed to help with rusting. So all of these are good things. Uh, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of lock stick. Let me just... Eh, it's like a little bump, but it might just be I got something. Oh, yeah, hold on. So, little pro tip for you. If you want to clean off, if you're getting a little bit of lock stick, especially if you have a lock bar insert, it's probably not going to get stick normally. You just take some alcohol, put on a Q-tip, wipe down the tang of the blade like that. You see how I left some alcohol on it? And then I open it. I let it sit there because now that alcohol is getting on the lock bar insert on the lock face, essentially. You kind of just let it sit there and cure, not cure, but dry. Um, and then close it. You're probably going to get a little stick that first time because you put alcohol on it. Then I do it maybe one more time. Normally I'd flick it, but since I just loctited this, I'm not going to do that. Q-tip. Yep, now I have zero anything, so we're good. I might feel a little bit of grit. Uh, I think it's the detent ball. It's like slowly wearing that path onto the uh, blade, so I'm not going to um, put more oil on there. I'll let it wear in by itself. But anyway, guys, there you go. Pena, bravo. X-Series Bravo from Knifejoy, uh, black micarta version with copper accents. Shout out to Knifejoy for this one. I really, really like this knife. Uh, I was a little bit miffed about the order process because I ordered with Apple Pay and then somehow the order got like, didn't go through even though I got a confirmation I had to order again. They held the knife for me, but I don't know, it just seemed a little odd. 
um, and it took a week to get here, but you know what? The knife is fantastic. The ergos on this thing are great. The action, the detent, all that stuff is solid, right? So, um, you know, it's it was worth it for sure. Uh, I'm just going to check the screw tightness. There we go. We're good. Everything's tight. Everything's good to go. So there you go, guys. Hope this helped. If you have one, hope you enjoyed it. If you don't and you just want to check it out. Um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. If you want to join the memberships, you can down there. You can join Patreon. It's all in the description. Um, all my affiliate links. All of this helps the channel, guys, immensely. And I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're climbing. We're almost getting to 5,000. Uh, could not do this without you guys. So I love you. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.